Okay, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, everybody, depending on where you're located. My name is Bill Lawless, or William Lawless. You can see me probably up in the left hand of your screen right there. I'm the good-looking guy with the blue shirt. And today we're going to be going through AutoChartist, which is, as you know, a tool that will assist you in detecting and discovering patterns uh, on charts. Now, we're joined today by James Hirechick from AutoChartist, and he's going to be taking us through today's presentation. But uh, before we get started, let me just say a big thank you to everybody for your patience and for your attendance today. I think uh, you'll find this very useful. And as I said earlier in the mic check, uh, please make sure that you have your pens and pencils ready. Write down questions that, might, that you might want to have answered at the end. We will do a Q&A. Uh, you will be able to type your questions in the chat window, and we'll do our best to get to as many as we can. Uh, but again, uh, we want to say thank you to everybody for your attendance today. And before we get rolling, I'll tell you quickly about myself. I'm the Director of Retail Accounts here at FXDD. I have about 22 years in the Forex business. And when I come across products such as AutoChartist, it always piques my interest to see how the, the business has evolved over time. Where I used to have to do all this stuff manually, we now have a tool that will assist us, assist us in discovering where these patterns are, or not even assist us, but generally point them out to us. So this is going to be a very educational presentation today. Uh, so as you know, before we get started, we have to go through what I like to refer to as the particulars. And the particulars in this case are the risk disclosures. And we want to make sure everybody in attendance today understands the risks associated with trading foreign exchange. So please, I'm going to give everybody a minute to read the high risk warning, which obviously begins with foreign exchange carries a high level of risk that may not be suitable for all investors. I'll give you a couple seconds to continue to read through it, and then we'll continue on. All right, you might have had a chance to read through that one. And then we have the following one, which is the advisory warning. And we do this as we are regulated by the National Futures Association, and we want to adhere strictly to their guidelines. So once again, I'm going to give you a minute to read the advisory warning. And then, of course, we'll get started with today's presentation. Just remember, the presentation today will be recorded, and you will be able to view it for playback shortly after it's completed. Alrighty, I guess that gives everybody enough time. And if you didn't have enough time and you need further explanation about what the advisory warning or the risk disclosure is, you'll be able to contact me directly when this is completed, and I can explain it in more detail if you need it. So with that, and there you go. You see our information right there. So we'll be putting that up at the end of the today's presentation as well so you have a way to reach us. But with that, I'm going to turn this over to James so he can take us through it. And from time to time, I might ask a few questions, or I may ask him to elaborate on certain points. But James, please uh, take it away. All right, thank you, Bill. I appreciate you uh, guys sticking around. Uh, I'm sorry it was a little uh, late there with the technical difficulties, but we worked through. When we go live like that, sometimes things happen. Uh, what you should be seeing right now is a live shot of the AutoChartist FXDD platform. And uh, we'll primarily be working from this today, but I also have set up the FXDD MT4 MetaTrader uh, platform also. So we'll be able to uh, go back to that towards the end of the webinar. Now, the first thing uh, we covered last time was just a general layout of, these, of this platform. And today we're going to focus on one key concept that AutoChartist does, and that is a chart pattern analysis. You can see here in the center that we do chart pattern analysis. We do Fibonacci patterns and key level analysis. Those will be uh, future webinar topics. But today we're going to talk about chart patterns. We're going to talk about completed patterns and emerging patterns. And basically, uh, the concept of completed pattern uh, means that a market, after a market has formed a pattern, it breaks out in either direction. That's what completes the pattern. But prior to that, we have what we call emerging patterns. Like, for example, if we look at this uh, US dollar Japanese yen chart. Okay, because we are working with live data and I have quite a few. Sometimes we get that little circle there, but bear with me. We're connected and it's live. So, what an emerging pattern is, is uh, it shows that a market has made a formation 
except that the chart action or the trading action is inside the support and resistance lines. Okay, if I blow this up a little bit, uh, you'll be able to see it more clearly. And again, it'll take a couple of seconds here to come up uh, as it's crunching the data. Okay, you can see that we have a support resistance line here. This is the resistance, this is support. On this line here, this vertical line, this shows when the auto chart is program identified the pattern. Okay, so it shows that at 1900 hours on uh, August 8th, we identified this emerging triangle pattern on the 30 minute chart. Now, when the market finally breaks out through resistance or support, it's going to become a completed pattern, and at that point, we're going to have a target zone set up either above or below, depending on the direction that the market went. Now, going back to the main screen here, you can see that we are going to identify the exchange, the symbol, the interval, the pattern, the time it was identified, both in date and, and actual hour, the length of the pattern, which is inside here, how many candlesticks it took, to form that pattern. Now this direction arrow is grayed. That means it's emerging. So we're looking for an upside move based on this, but we're not confident yet until we get the completed pattern. And at that point, it will turn green for an up move and red for a down move. So that's direction. We're also looking at this trend change to be a continuation. What that means is that we've had this initial trend which was the trend prior to this pattern's formation, and that was up. You can see when this top was made. And since the breakout is projected to the upside in the direction of the initial trend, we're going to call this a continuation pattern. If the breakout had been to the downside, then it would be a reversal pattern. We also rank the quality, the overall quality of this pattern, and that's taking the average of the initial trend uniformity and clarity indicators simple average. And what this, this does is this quality indicator ranks them from 0 to 10, 10 being the strongest. So this is a 6 bar or slightly above average pattern. The initial trend is 1, meaning that on this move up here, it was perceived as a, a weak uh, trend at the time. Now uniformity rating, that refers to the aesthetics of the market. Does it look appealing? Are these bottoms and tops equidistant? And uh, it, it, so it deals with how the pattern looks. The clarity rating, which is really highly rated here, nine bars, that looks for the absence of uh, price spikes or gaps. So the cleaner the chart pattern, the higher the clarity. Uh, this, what I try to tell people is that uniformity and clarity are going to are going to represent what the pattern looks like inside support and resistance. So it deals with how appealing the pattern is to a trader. Whereas the initial trend and the breakout refer to what happens outside. So the initial trend is what's happening outside the pattern. And then once we get a breakout, uh, it's going to measure the strength of the breakout outside of the pattern. We have a, a no breakout at this time because it is an emerging pattern. But once it does break out, then we're going to get a rating as well as a forecast price. So if we go down here and uh, we look at um, a pattern from this morning, the only breakout we could see at this, at this time is uh, a US dollar Mexican peso breakout on an hourly chart. So in this case, we had a uh, rising wedge formation. And the market broke through support. And as it broke through, uh, we then got a breakout rating as well as this target zone down here. So you can see the difference between an emerging and completed. So completed is going to show us this breakout. And that once this breakout is, is identified, the stronger the breakout, the more bars you're going to have here. And then you're also going to get the uh, auto chart as target zone. Okay. Hey, James. So that's a different James, yes. yes. I have a quick question for you regarding this. With all these uh, intervals, or the interval right now we're on is 60 minutes, uh, can we use auto charters to cross all time intervals, or is, it, is there specific ones that it's better for? 
Well, as far as the first part of the question, uh, you can use it for all chart uh, uh, periods. So let's take a look at it. I want to say I don't want to say all. So in other words, you can't go to a five minute or one minute. But if you go to this search box, you can start that over. If I go to new search, and you go to group, you can see that forex is listed in 15 minute, 240, 30, 60, all intraday. So that would include everything up above and then end of day, which is a 1440 minute chart. So these are the time periods that AutoTardis is going to be analyzing. Okay, what I'm going to be doing here is uh, I'll show you quickly since we went into that area. If you wanted to, if you preferred to trade only 15 minute, you can set up uh, the group for 15 minutes and it'll be titled Forex 15 minute and it's going to be intraday so you can create the search and you see it pops up here and then uh, auto chart is bringing in the data from its server so it's going to take a little bit uh, longer while it refreshes but once it's in the cache then uh, it comes up faster so right now auto chart is looking for only 15 minute Forex patterns and that helps you filter and speed up your analysis. So it's important, uh, as I mentioned in the last webinar, that you have your uh, personal preferences and your and your specific uh, needs identified first, so that you're not looking at time periods or chart patterns that you may not like. So this should take uh, only a few more minutes here, or I should say seconds, um, as it's bringing in this data. In a 15-minute chart, since there it's such a short time period, there are a lot. Usually there's a lot of uh, patterns, so it takes a little bit longer. But once it refreshes, uh, then it's good to go. But let me move on to something else, and uh, I'll go back to that one. Let's see, maybe it's up now. Hold on. Okay, there we go. Well, it looks like there weren't a lot this morning. Uh, so we have the 15 minute here only. So we're looking at uh, the fr the most uh, fresh signal was a 15 minute on this Japanese yen. And you can see here that it formed a triangle pattern again. And uh, again, uh, uh, just from a technical standpoint, uh, if you if you see a lot of triangle patterns, that means that the market has been trading sideways. Okay. So what AutoTardis does is uh, when you start to see these groups come up, like a triangle pattern or pennant patterns, they tend to represent that the market has been trading sideways and that you're looking for some kind of a breakout from a sideways pattern. So you can hey, see James, here on the not, not, yeah. Just real quick, for those of people on the webinar today who might be new to Forex or certainly looking for a new tool, if we could just explain a little bit when you say the market's moving sideways, you know, maybe touch on that, what exactly that means. Sure. Okay, uh, what we, we have here are uh, two sets of patterns. And there's a grouping of patterns called trending patterns and non-trending patterns. Okay, now a trending pattern is going to be a pattern like a, uh, click on here, like a flag pattern that AutoTardis looks at. And what, what happens in a flag pattern is that there's a clearly defined up, or in this case, downtrend. You can see that there's parallel lines indicating that there's a downtrend. So a flag pattern is ca characterized as a trending pattern. So there's movement of uh, lower lows and lower highs, in this case down. We also have uh, patterns uh, that represent uptrending patterns, like this channel up for the Swiss franc, US dollar Swiss franc. You can clearly see that there's distance between support and resistance, and there's room for the market to trend. Okay, that's what these trending patterns look like. Now, non-trending patterns are going to be patterns like triangles and pennants. And you can see that what they do is they start out wide, okay, and then they gradually compress, giving it a sideways look. Now, what they also are very indicative of impending volatility because when these prices get squeezed and compressed, they eventually hit or they narrow to an apex on, these, on this formation. Let me blow this up a little bit so you can see some extension. And so what I meant by sideways was that it was a pattern like a triangle or a pennant 
that has been squeezing the market. So instead of getting higher tops and higher bottoms, you're getting these lower tops and you're getting higher bottoms, and it's making for a very narrow trade. But it's also almost pinpointing when this market's going to break out. So although they are sideways, they the, the rotation of the market is usually from sideways or non-volatile to breakout in volatile. So these are it's very it's very um, important that when you're if you like to trade breakouts and momentum trades that you watch these emerging triangles or non-trending patterns. If you like to trade trends and you like to uh, sell resistance and buy support, then you may want to look for cha uh, trending patterns such as channels or flags. Here's another example on the uh, New Zealand dollar, US dollar of a non-trending pattern. And what happens is, again, you get the wide move and then you get this gradual narrowing of support and resistance. And then once you uh, compress the prices enough, traders grow tired of the same prices and they, they're waiting for news to break out. And sometimes that's exactly what produces the sideways pattern is they're waiting for some kind of news to come out, a central bank meeting, a major decision by a central bank, uh, uh, interest rate news, anything like that that could produce a move. So what happens is traders just grow uh, complacent in here and they, and they feel that they don't have enough information or clarity to move the market and they'll hold it into this triangle formation long enough until they get a breakout like in this case. So here's an example of a non-trending triangle pattern that uh, we had, where we saw the breakout on this 15 minute chart. Okay, so I hope that answers the question between trending and non-trending. I'll be spending more time with that in a, in a second. Now the second part of your question was about uh, reliability and Autotardis has come up with some performance statistics and they, they talk about uh, overall statistics of all signals, but they've also uh, come up with some statistics on uh, certain patterns. So an ascending triangle pattern, for example, that's a non-trending pattern. Shows the number of patterns and uh, the number of percentage right. And uh, then if you go down here, you'll see a descending triangle pattern is also a non-trending pattern. And uh, then your basic triangle pattern down here, which is uh, another one and another non-trending pattern is the pennant. So anything that starts out wide like a pennant or a triangle and narrows gradually till it comes to an apex, those are considered non-trending patterns. Triangles, which are symmetrical triangles, you have ascending triangles, and you have descending as well as flags. Now your other patterns, the channel down, channel up, and your uh, falling wedge and your rising wedge, as well as your flag, those are considered to be trending. And the statistics of success and failure are listed in the Auto Charters Performance Stats section if you wanted to uh, see what uh, you know the success of those patterns are. OK, now, um, through the, through the uh, power of the searches, you're able to come in and create a search, and I'll show you what I've searched here. I've searched all what I consider to be the majors. So I filtered out some of the contracts that I don't like to watch or the pairs that I don't like to watch. So I like to watch the euro, US dollar, euro, Australian dollar, and euro Japanese yen, and euro British pound. Uh, if you had asked me two weeks ago if I had been looking at those, I probably would have said no, but because of the bottoming action in the euro recently, that made me want to consider uh, looking at these markets that have been beat up pretty bad. I mean, the euro was going down against everything up until uh, Draghi's comments two weeks ago. And so I wanted to see what kind of action I was getting in the euro versus these other contracts. Then I look at the basic uh, dollar pairs also. So that's how I create my searches. OK, now down here, uh, we have another section. Uh, called advanced search, and 
you have the ability to select prices, but that's not that important. Maybe for a stock trader, if you have a program that follows auto charter stocks or something, you want to look at minimum prices. But for Forex, it's hard to determine uh, minimum or maximum price range you want to watch. But I also have the ability to pick a, a direction that I want to focus on. In this case, I have bull or bear, so I don't have a bias either up or down. I'm going to get trade signals uh, in either direction. I also have selected continuation or reversal, and that has to do with is the market following the direction of the initial trend, as I mentioned before. Again, I like to look for both. Uh, reversals seldom occur. Uh, I think continuations occur more often. Um, head and shoulders patterns, inverse and regular head and shoulders patterns all, are always reversals, so uh, they will show up in that category. Um, I also have the ability to work with clarity indicators if I want high rated stuff. I tend to be a little bit more aggressive, so I have everything low rated. But if I wanted to uh, move my clarity indicator over to get uh, highly rated clarity patterns or patterns that are very aesthetic or very appealing to the eye, I may want to move it over. Now what happens there is if you have low uh, minimum requirements, you're going to get a large sample size of trading opportunities. So the stronger you make the um, quality indicators, then the less uh, fewer patterns you're going to get. So uh, that may uh, hurt your performance overall because you could be filtering out good trades. Um, so I try to keep my bullpen of trades uh, open uh, so I can get the maximum, uh, see the maximum availability of opportunities. Now here are the patterns that AutoTardist identifies. They range from the ascending triangle patterns, channels, as I mentioned, wedges, rectangles, triple double bottoms, um, things like that. So there are quite a few of them. If you have a question about what, what the characteristics are of a pattern, you can click on this question mark here and it's going to tell you that the ascending triangle uh, is two or more equal highs forming a horizontal line at the top and, uh, and then you're going to have an ascending line also. So this tells you, this little question mark will tell you, or this I for information is going to tell you what uh, the characteristics are of a market. Okay, so now if I wanted to, if I wanted to look at only non-trending patterns, as I mentioned before, if I was looking for markets that are moving sideways or non-trending and ready for a breakout, I would go in and I would uh, deselect anything that doesn't have to do with a triangle pattern or a non-trending pattern. So here I am clicking off of all the chart patterns that don't represent a non-trending pattern. So I have pennant and I have ascending, descending, and I have my triangle patterns. So then what I do is uh, I want to... Um, save that search and it's going to create a list of patterns and I've already done this here kind of like those cooking shows you know you put it in the oven and it's already ready so here's here's a list of only uh, non-trending patterns for uh, today that AutoTardis has identified so we can see here this is the emerging pattern on the British pound Japanese yen okay this is going to be uh, a U.S. dollar Japanese yen 30-minute pattern. So you can see that there's plenty of patterns. You can also see that I have 1,440-minute patterns here, meaning that uh, I can look at basically a daily chart here. And some strategies that I incorporate or others incorporate is determining what the main trend is doing. In other words, they look at the market from a top down. They analyze the market hourly or I'm sorry, daily down to 240, down to hourly, and then they use the 15 minute for their entry if they can get all the patterns coordinated. So in this case, I'm looking at a bias to the upside in a big triangle pattern. And again, these are days. So you're looking at a pattern that has uh, been trading and, and forming for over 47 candlesticks. So that's a long period of time. And you can see here, again, how this market has has ranged and trended both up and down 
and then it's just gone into this sideways pattern until it's it's getting to the point where it's going to have to make a move here because prices have compressed so much and volatility seems to be ready to explode. So this is a pattern I would look at from a daily standpoint. Since my bias is to the upside on the daily charts, then I may want to go to this uh, British pound Japanese yen on the 240 minute and I want to see what, what we're looking at there. And so this is saying that even though the daily looks like it wants to go up, the 240 minute is saying this market's not ready yet. So it kind of gives you an idea of whether you're going against a big trend or going with a trend. So in this case we have uh, 1440 minute pointing up but the 240 minute pointing down. And this too is in a triangle formation. So um, what I want to point out is that when you are, if you are attracted to non-trending or triangle formations, that while the market is emerging and inside here, you can anticipate the market to stay inside this triangle and and you can look for opportunities on support and opportunities off resistance. And if once the market is ready to break out, then you may want to shift your uh, trading style to momentum, like this NAS, like this New Zealand dollar, U.S. dollar. Okay, treat it inside as an emerging pattern for a long period of time, and then finally today it gave us the breakout. So you have to determine whether you're going to be a support resistance trader or a breakout and momentum trader, and then establish your rules there and understand the risks of, of each particular style. Now the other set of patterns that I look at are the trending patterns. Okay, the trending patterns uh, represent markets that, as I said before, are trading inside of parallel lines. They're trading inside of support and resistance and following a clearly defined trend. So when you get a breakout through support, for example, that's indicative of a change in trend to the downside. And that's what happened with this U.S. dollar Mexican peso. If we go to uh, the Euro Canadian dollar, which is another pattern, you could see that this market has been trading inside of this channel uh, for a long time on the 1440 minute chart. As I said earlier, that when you get the, you saw that weakness in the Euro, you could see how long this this uh, channel was, or how long it lasted. Now we're still inside the channel, but you can see that the market is showing signs of turning and that it could retrace maybe 50% of this point or it could go all the way back up to resistance and then continue in the, ch in, the, in the channel. So I can look at my channels and my trending patterns on both the long term and the intraday basis. So in this case, if I still have a downtrend in the Euro Canadian dollar, on my 1440 minute chart, then I may want to invoke a strategy where I'm just looking for selling opportunities uh, um, in the direction of this main trend. So that's that's kind of how I use that. So um, to get to these trending patterns, I'm going to uh, go back to my uh, original search or create a new search and then go through here and uh, I go down to my chart patterns and I want to select only patterns that refer to trending markets and that would be a, a channel up, channel down, falling wedge, a uh, rising wedge, and a flag pattern. Okay, so then my search is going to come up looking for only those patterns. Yes. So James, if you don't mind me just popping in here for a minute, as you're going through this, this is an excellent tool to help traders not only recognize what's going on in the pairs they actually watch, but certainly can bring them new ideas for pairs that they may or may not have seen any kind of possibility of, of a trade setup, or, or certainly pairs that they don't normally watch, and this will alert them to possible trades that can be in pairs that uh, are not on their radar. Is that correct? That's correct. That The one beauty part about it is that you're going to have two types of traders. You're going to have those traders that uh, what I call a bullpen. I refer to a baseball term. I have trades that I'm looking at in a particular uh, 
the group of patterns. So I want to basically look for uh, dollar, dollar uh, forex trades, or I want to look at euro trades. But sometimes what I do is I want to make sure that I have exposure to the other markets, and that's a great uh, point with AutoTardis is that you don't have to be an expert on a lot of the particular currency markets, but if you're familiar with the patterns and their characteristics, then uh, if you see a triangle pop up, for example, in a Mexican peso, which maybe you're not watching every day, then at least you know what to do. If you're primarily a Euro trader, then all of a sudden you see uh, something pop up, uh, a breakout pop up on a New Zealand dollar, then all you have to do is be familiar with the pattern and its characteristics. If you're So you really don't have to know uh, who the central banker is of a particular currency, all you have to know is that you have a triangle pattern, it's non-trending, that means impending volatility, I should be looking for a breakout. Uh, if you have a, tr a channel pattern, you will know it's trending. So that's the great part about it is you, all you have to know is whether your, pa your pattern is trending or non-trending, and then you just have to know how to react to it. Well, it, it just to, to draw an analogy to this, which you know, as you talk, I sit here and I'm watching, and I'm certainly still learning about auto chartist, and I, obviously I, I do enjoy what I'm seeing, but if I wanted to, to draw an analogy, uh, in the media, if you want to track who's talking about you, or you want to track keywords, you hire what they call listening services. And because it's very difficult for you to read every newspaper or watch every TV program, but you do want to be aware of when something that you are interested in comes up, you hire these services. And this, to me, kind of does the same thing. Hey, I know how to use these patterns. These particular patterns I'm very comfortable with, and I know how to employ them in my trading strategy. But boy, it's real difficult for me to look at every single currency pair all day long to see when one of these is emerging. So this service, to me, uh, allows this, the auto charters platform to bring these ideas to you as opposed to you having to scan the markets all day long to find these opportunities. So I think that's a wonderful aspect of this, this platform itself. Yeah, you know, it, it, when you're looking at a long-term pattern sometimes, you think you're seeing uh, things because uh, of the way maybe you, you uh, scale your charts and all that. But what AutoTardis does is you don't have to stare and say, I wonder if, that, if that's a triangle. If it is a triangle, it's going to be identified and it's going to come up. Uh, if you notice uh, that all the markets are trading a particular pattern, then that too, you'll notice that. You'll, if you can take a glance and train yourself to take a glance at all this information down here, and you start to see uh, a, a list of, uh, of emerging patterns developing, then that's telling you that something's going to be happening because markets are forming emerging patterns. There's patterns being created, but there hasn't been that momentum yet. So it's kind of giving an idea that maybe these emerging patterns is going to rotate to a completed pattern. So if you're aggressive and you want to trade an emerging pattern in anticipation of a breakout, that's one strategy. But then sometimes you may want to say, I'm just going to wait for the breakout. And when it, when it comes up, AutoTardis will identify it for you. So you have two ways to... Uh, to look at it, but all of them uh, give you a little bit more freedom uh, to to look at other markets, and at the same time, uh, you have flexibility too because there's such a large bullpen of particular trades. And if you're not, if you don't like the a long list of trades, again, too, you have the opportunity to filter the markets you like, the time periods you like, as well as the chart pattern that you like. So um, all the different I don't want to say excuses, but excuses that traders make for not taking a pattern or taking a trade like uh, I wasn't watching it when it happened or I didn't know about that market or I didn't see that market in the news. Well, AutoTardis takes care of that by uh, doing that work for you. And all you have to do is learn how to manage your risk and to trade the markets that you can, uh, where you understand the risk and, and you have the money to trade. So. That's uh, that's the key part you work on in your psychological aspects, and let AutoTardis do the technical aspects, and that's what's you know really good um, selling point of this of this uh, product. Okay, so I've covered the uh, the main patterns and and how to create them, and uh, you know showed you live action. You can see this little uh, 
indicator when that pops up that tells me a new trades came up so while we were talking here uh, two new uh, emerging patterns were identified you have the ability to set a time uh, a, a, a bell that goes off you can hear a little noise go off or you can have this little indicator and this gives you the fresh signals you can also learn by going back to uh, expired trading patterns and you can see what uh, the market has done you know prior to so this kind of gives you an understanding this one didn't quite hit the target but at least what it, you can do is it'll, you'll learn on how you can uh, put stops in the marketplace based on certain patterns if you went back to um, the US Japanese Zen too you'll see that we're going to identify uh, old expired patterns that you can use to help you formulate your trading strategy and, and, and again learn how to play stops with certain patterns. And uh, finally, again, the performance stats help you understand the success of particular patterns as well as uh, symbols also. So uh, I'll open it up to some questions now. Oh, I'm sorry, I wanted to spend a second here on MT4. If you do have the MT4 platform, you're going to get the trades that come off the uh, regular web platform, except you're going to get them at a slower pace. You'll see uh, graphics with uh, uh, that you'll be able to apply additional tools on, like this particular chart here. Um, after Auto Chartist gives a signal, you can apply moving averages to the chart also. So that's what uh, MT4 does. It gives you freedom to apply other technical indicators along with the Auto Chartist signals that uh, you get off the other charts. So it's the same information, except it doesn't come in a list form. It comes in, it actually shows up on the chart. And this box here contains all the information, uh, except that um, you see this, this act, the um, live action in the marketplace and uh, auto chartist parameters laid on top of that chart. So it's a good tool to have if you have MT4. It's a good add-on uh, to your um, program, and it, it is beneficial to you. As a, as a trader to be able to look at how these patterns develop over real time. Okay, I'll go to uh, uh, see if we have any questions here. Um, if I can find the... Uh... James, while we, while, we open it up, uh, while we open it up for questions, let me just make a couple of announcements to everybody while I have you on here before we finish up with the questions. The first thing to understand is if you have a live account with FXDD, AutoChartist is free to use. So you will not be charged to use AutoChartist. You can use it uh, for free with FXDD. The other thing I want to remind people of, if you are a U.S. resident, uh, if you go to our homepage, fxdd.com, we are running a promotion right now where if you complete a live application, so if you're not a current customer of FXDD, and you complete a live application for a trading account, FXDD will credit that account with $250 for you to try us in a live environment. Of course, there are terms and conditions that are with that, and if you have questions about that, we are always here to answer them. And when we end this today, we will put up phone numbers and contact information for you to reach all of us so we can answer those questions for you. Uh, however, please remember that uh, we are running that promotion for U.S. residents who are not current customers of FXDD and who wish to try us out. Uh, so with that, let's look at some of the questions. And uh, James, I imagine you can see them on the, on the uh, chat window there as well. So you can certainly pick out whatever ones you want to answer. Yeah, um, this question from Winston, and thanks for attending, Winston. Appreciate it. Uh, would auto charters show a double bottom in the 15 or 30 minute USD uh, CAD? So if I went back to it, to this uh, chart, I'd want to look at uh, all my my majors because I have the USD there. I can sort by symbol. And um, I can see what we have here in the USD. And if, if there was a double bottom forming, there has to be certain conditions. Otherwise, uh, just because two bottoms are, are similar doesn't necessarily mean that uh, there's a double bottom formation. There has, there, because it's an algorithm, there's strict uh, mathematics to it. In this particular case, uh, it doesn't look like it's identified uh, anything on a 15 or 30 minute chart yet. This is the uh, US dollar, Canadian dollar. It's looking at a bigger picture on the 240 minute chart. Now, although these two bottoms are, are similar and they match, they may not necessarily meet the uh, algorithm requirements. Usually when a market uh, hits a level and then rallies two bars, 
or three bars, almost like any kind of trend indicator. You have to have some kind of filter in there. Then the mar then auto targets will identify like this is a low price because we had two bars up, and then here we had this big candlestick up, and that that then sets in motion this this support line, uh, but not necessarily a double bottom formation. Okay, let me see if I got a uh, get lost there a second. Hang on a second. Okay, there we go. Um, does uh, this is from Davey? Does the FXDD Auto Tardis plugin work fully if uh, install a non FXDD? I'm not sure about that. Uh, I think um, the the uh, MT4 plugin is uh, unique to the uh, because there's probably platform specification. It's probably built to meet the needs of each uh, platform that you use. So I would suggest just use just use the FXDD MT4 platform and then get their auto plug plugin and then you won't have to worry about whether you're getting uh, the correct signals. Uh, any other questions uh, regarding trending, non-trending patterns? Again, I just want to recap that my style uh, is not necessarily everybody else's, but I like to analyze from top down. So I like to work with the 1440 minute chart to kind of get an idea of the big trend and then I work down to the smaller time periods because some days you're going to wa walk in and all the wheels are going to be lined up where everything's pointing down it's a lot easier to trade when you get um, a lot of support with the market pointing everything pointing in the same direction um, at the same time I, I'm very strict on whether I, I'm a going to be trend or counter trend trader because I think it makes a difference uh, whether you're a novice or an experienced trader that uh, when you ha when you are with the trend if you can fight the uh, feeling to just get out of a trade because you're uncomfortable uh, trend trades work very well if you can override that discomfort of of maybe giving back some of those gains because I think uh, if you look back to history, when you get a trend change, you're going to get a, you tend to get a longer term move. If you're going counter trend, then I think it's easier to set targets and just uh, let it hit the target if you're right and just consider yourself fortunate to have beaten the market in a counter trend trade. But if you're, again, if you're trend trading, uh, use auto charters to get that initial breakout and then learn how to work your trailing stops especially when you hit the target zone. It's not automatic the market's going to stop there, but if you can learn to trade through those uh, target prices uh, and, and milk the trade for a little more than, than it uh, originally appeared, then I think um, you, know, you become a good trader. So the idea is let auto traders do all the work in identifying the trades so you can work on your skills as a trader and learning how to hold uh, trades and learning how to exit uh, losers fast, things like that that make a big difference. Now Bob K asks, uh, can I add moving average, averages to charts? Yes, you can. If you see here on this particular chart, Auto Chartist is live on here with a particular trading signal, but you can also, I just threw this moving average in on here. So a way, the way I would use Auto Chartist on uh, MT4 is uh, since breakout trades tend to indicate volatility, then I would use something like an ATR or a volatility indicator or maybe a volume indicator along the bottom, something that shows that there's momentum or a shift in uh, volatility or a rising volume to go along with that breakout. Now, that may sound a little sophisticated if you're new, but that's what, that's what happens in the market. You can get a breakout, but if it doesn't happen on rising volume, it's likely to fail. If you get the juice and the power behind a breakout, then it's more likely to be a success. Yes, question? Let me just throw something out here real quick, James. Uh, you referred to something called ATR. Uh, for those of you not aware, that's called uh, average true range. Uh, so again, anytime, uh, you know, you'll hear a lot of uh, abbreviations, acronyms, and things like that in this market, certainly if you're new. Uh, so if something doesn't make sense or you hear some kind of a a shortened terminology or something that doesn't sound like a word but just sounds like an abbreviation, uh, certainly speak up and let us know because uh, sometimes, uh, you know, we that have been in the market for so long, sometimes it just slips out and we don't 
quite want to, but quite remember that uh, sometimes people don't know. But uh, if you could tell us, James, just a little bit, maybe about what, why you would employ average true range there. What that would help is that a, like a momentum indicator, like uh, well, or something like that. I slipped it in here along the bottom, and what it does is okay, great. It it basically uh, it looks at in this particular one, it's defaulted to 14 bars. Well, what it does is it measures the distance between the high of one, the low of one day and the high of the next, or or the high of one day to the low, and it it keeps an average of what that move and over a certain period of time, and it gives a trader an idea of how fast the market's moving. So, the tendency of these markets is that when there's low volatility. Uh, it's going to eventually rotate to high volatility. So you want to look at the instrument that you're trading, and you want to know if you're at a low volatility area, because at that point you're waiting for volatility to expand. I'm sure you hear it a lot in if you talk to option traders, where they talk about volatility strategies and non-volatility strategies or low volatility. Volatility is your friend. But it can work against you, especially because we're trading leveraged instruments. But what you want to do is identify, you want to enter when volatility is low, and you want to exit as it's expanding, because as it's exp you want to try to become so good of a trader that you're in before the crowd, and as it begins to expand, when you're exiting, you're actually giving it to somebody uh, to, who's paying up for it. And that's what ATR measures. It shows points in the market where volatility is low, and then it expands to high. If you look at the center here, you'll see that you had volatility low when this market was moving sideways down here. Okay, and then when it expand, then it that's the point you want to start looking at for your entries. And then as it expands, even though it peaked somewhere in here, if you look at peak ATR. That's where you want to start dishing it off is when it starts to peak because then what happens is volatility drops off again. So you're really not watching too much of the price. You're really trying to predict the movement. You let the chart pattern give you the direction and you let the ATR, average true range, kind of give you an idea is volatility ready to come in. Because ATR is not going to predict direction just like volatility or the VIX indicator that they use in stocks. It doesn't predict direction, but your chart patterns and auto targets will help you find the chart pattern. And if it's telling you a market's going to break out to the upside, but it's not ready yet, then you want to try to match up those low periods of volatility and then try to get in as the market expands. And then once it expands, then you want to start exiting and waiting for the next opportunity. So that's how I would use volatility. All right, any other questions? Let's see. Do you have something there? Um, There's a couple more. Um, <clears throat> first one comes from Larry H. And Larry, yes, this is being recorded for rebroadcast. So those of you who might have missed something or want to hear it again or want to go over it or share it with a friend, uh, this is being recorded for rebroadcasting, so that's a that's a good thing. It's, if you can go to our if you Google FXDD YouTube channel, that's where we're putting all the recordings and the rebroadcasts. So FXDD now has a, a YouTube channel, so if you can just Google that and go there, you will uh, be able to find the uh, rebroadcast shortly. Okay, Larry. Um, the question as far as where you're going to go afterwards, of course you can always call FXDD for for help. And uh, if they don't know the answer, they'll point you to the YouTube website to go through the webinars. But we also have uh, educational articles here up at this tab. You can see these three tabs. So if you go to resources and education, you'll be able to get a video of a quick tour of Auto Chartist, a daily market watch, and as well as uh, how to set up searches. These are other intro videos, intro to chart patterns, Fibonacci patterns, things like that. And then there's manuals, and then there's ebooks. There's all kinds of information there, even foreign language articles. So uh, downloads of different MT4 platforms too. So um, AutoTardis covers it as far as education. And, and we wanted to make it easy so that you can just uh, let the program work and identify the patterns 
and then you can just step in and and react to the patterns because you've had this educational background you've come to webinars like this and you've learned about things and if anything just to re, uh, just to wrap everything up you came out of here knowing that there's trending and non-trending patterns that I think you're uh, ahead of the game for a lot of traders who don't know that who fight the trend when they're in a non-trending pattern so that's very important that you know the non-trending patterns and, in, and then you set up that auto chartist uh, download and you watch it and you start to see how things begin to develop from emerging patterns to completed patterns and uh, those are that will put you ahead of the curve and, and uh, help you become a little bit more successful. All right. Well, thanks for your time. I think that's it, though, unless you have something else. Yeah, let's just uh, just to wrap up, just the last question we have, I want to get it in from Winston. Uh, regarding alerts, are there audible alerts? And I guess uh, it would depend on the size of your speakers, Winston, but uh, James, are there audible alerts that somebody can set? Yep. So like in the old days when I was trading, uh, I had a pager that would wake me up in the middle of the night and usually it would be my Australia desk calling me and telling me something was either done or not done or done incorrectly and ruined my night's sleep. But uh, is there an alert that can be set so if Winston wants to be woken up, uh, he can be? Uh, not, nothing that's going to call your uh, pager or phone, but no, no. the program here has an alert sound on and off button. Uh, that's, okay. that's what AutoTardis does right that's now. What does. So uh, if you leave... Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, because I leave... I, I, um, I can leave it on and... Uh, it's like I'm trained to hear that sound go off for my cell phone. It's like I could be three floors away and hear one of those go off. <laughs> but, uh, go off. Um, and uh, so that's that's good to have. And again, you're uh, to filter what you want and uh, you know and have these things pop up again in whatever time frame or interval you want to see. It's you know really good benefit because. Uh, if you are if you are an active trader, then you you know you have to be able to uh, maybe get up after a three hour nap, just hear the alert, look at the pattern, and say yes, I recognize that pattern. I'm taking action, or no, I recognize that I don't recognize that pattern. I'm going back to bed. I mean, that's how fast you want to be able to do stuff instead of lingering and searching and looking for stuff that oh, you bet may not exist. You bet. Well, listen. I guess that sums it up, and we obviously answered Winston's question well enough for him. So that's good. Well, James, as always, a huge thank you. You did a great job, as always. Uh, let's do this again soon, touch on some more aspects of auto charters. But once again, I definitely thank you for your uh, great presentation today. Okay. Thank you, Bill. appreciate and, uh, it. My pleasure. And my pleasure. I, learned, I always learn something from you. And to everybody out there in webinar land, uh, once again, just to touch on a couple of quick things, if you are a U.S. resident, not a customer of FXDD, and complete an application for a live trading account, uh, we will credit the account with $250, so you can try us out in a live environment. Once again, there are terms and conditions along with this, so if you go to fxdd.com and click on the feature pane on our home page, you can learn a little more about it. Don't forget, Auto Chartist is free to use with FXDD, so you can use it at no additional cost to you. Uh, to help you identify some of these patterns. And if you have any questions at all, let me see if I can share my desktop real quick. And uh, let's see if I can go to the slideshow maybe. There you go. Hopefully everybody can see that. Can you see that, James? Hopefully everybody can see the uh, slide here that says thank you for attending. If you have any questions, please feel free to call us at 212 Four three seven eight zero zero eight, or email sales team at fxdd.com or certainly go on fxdd.com and click on the live chat button. That's it for today. Thank you everybody for your attendance and we look forward to presenting you with more useful information on our webinar series soon. Have a wonderful day. Bye now. Thank you. Bye bye.